guys and gals, and Ari here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon, today, and coming back at you another Let's Play episode of A Masquerade in the Woods. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go back into this horror house. Horror house, not the other kind. Okay. I shake my head to rid myself of the thought and return to reality. At least, this reality. Giant nods to the possum, taking the bottle in his big paw. He holds it up to his muzzle, but hesitates. A deep sigh rolls over his chest as he closes his eyes and throws his head back. Unlike ink, one gulp seems enough for the big dog as he quickly lowers it back down and swallows hard. Ironically, he looks to be on the verge of throwing that back up as well. I feel you, Lucas. God, what do you put in here? Ink shrugs as he steps over to the slightly ajar fridge door. Whatever I got at home. He grabs the handle and opens it further. I have a small stain off Giant's mask, preparing to hand it back over to him. But just as I'm about to, something else grabs my attention. What the fuck? A rustling from behind. Before I can react, someone grabs me. No. I'm yanked off balance back into someone as their arms wrap around my throat. I choke, cough, my coughing coating the inside of my mask and spit in, spit in warm air. Giant's mask falls to the floor, audibly hitting the wooden planks and scurrying up off to the side. Giant and Ink both spin around at the sound. The canine immediately reaches for his rifle while Ink pulls out his pistol. Whoa, 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 what the fuck's going on? I'm not sure Shepard mentioned anything about this in prep. Fuck. I flail, reaching for the gun stuffed in my waistband. But they're faster. They grab it, pressing the barrel against the hard plastic of the mask. I pause and set flight to grasp at the arm held around my throat, pulling on it to make space for my windpipe. Game's up, boys! Gun's on the table! Now! He shouts right in my ear in an accent I can't place. I can't see him, but I can smell him. It's a fitting smell for a place like this. He reeks, not only of musk, but of the same chemical scent I keep smelling. Like an unclean gym turned supply closet. Put the gun down! Let him go! The man shifts his grip and pushes the cold metal against my ear, folding it, folding it uncomfortably. I'm not asking again! He snarls and puffs impatiently. Puffs impatiently. I feel his torso rise and fall against my back, his heart beating as fast as mine. My wrists are already tingling with the adrenaline pumping through my veins. We both stand firm, guns aimed at the man, subsequently at me. Giant and ink on one side of the table, me and the man on the opposite. I've never been at the business end of a barrel before, let alone three. I hear him tighten his grip on the round the handle, and I square him in his grasp, pulling on his arms. Let go of me! Stand still, motherfucker! I said let him go! Giant's chest heaves up and down with each rapid breath. Ink keeps stealing glances at the anxious canine, finger on the trigger. My panicked breathing st steams up the inside of the mask, causing it to stick to my already damp fur. Do it! But then, something in the back of my brain turns, like a light switch. And everything feels calm. Peaceful. I know it's about to happen, and yet I'm okay with it. This is it. Dirty kitchen in the middle of nowhere. Managed to get out once. Guess twice was too much to ask for. One! Ahem, <clears throat> sorry. One! Are you fucking deaf? Let go of him! I kinda always imagined I'd die alone. Maybe in my room, an overdose or something. Alcohol poisoning, maybe. Not some distant place in a distorted reality surrounded by talking animals. This is all just a bad dream after all. Two! He presses the cylinder into my skull. I close my eyes. Three! I miss you, Miles. I'll see you on the other side. All right, all right. I open my eyes back up to see Giant tossing the rifle onto the kitchen table. You too, rat. Oh, you too, rat. On the table now. Ink huffs, tossing the gun down next to Giant's. The room falls silent for a moment as we all wait, listening to the heavy rain. About time someone caught up with you fuckers. Who the, who the fuck are you? BMPD, fuckface. Police? You, get in the corner. He points He points the pistol at Giant, then waves it in the direction of the stove. Without breaking eye contact with the man, Giant slowly steps back into the corner. With how large he is, however, he's only about a meter from the table. Okay, you. Okay, now you. He swivels the pistol to point at Ink. Open the drawer. Ink looks down at the counter next to him. Which, which one? Fucking all of them, now do it! 
He waves the gun flimsily in the air as ink begins opening each drawer slowly. One second, y'all. It is water time. Hmm. What a turn this has taken. The giant, meanwhile, looks around the room, chest still rising and falling at a fast, pay, fast, uneven pace. With his makeup trickling down the sides of his muzzle, it's difficult to see his face in the low light. The only light source coming is coming from the fridge, its door slightly ajar, letting a small sliver escape through the crack. Don't you get any fucking ideas, fatty? The giant doesn't answer, instead locking eyes with me. Even in the dark, I can see the stress and fear in them. He's just as scared as I am, but at the same time, I'm calm. My two different sides of me fighting for the correct response, one tugging towards flight, the other tugging towards towards fight. What am I looking for, exactly? Bottle. Twenty ounces. Doesn't sound like much... Doesn't sound like much like police work to me. What was that, rodent? I'm a marsupial, you asshole. He turns to face him fully. If you're looking for a rodent to stick your disgusting little needle dick in, there's one prepped and ready for you downstairs. I ain't no fucking queer. <laughs> oh my god. His arm shoots back up, aiming the gun at the possum. Ooh. And now there was Georgie. His aggravated stance, his grip around my neck loosens. I slip my right paw down from his arm, almost like I'm moving on instinct. Almost like I'm not entirely in control of my own actions. Might have been into some fucked up shit, but he wasn't a- Ooh, God. He shovels the gun to gesture, emphasizing his point. I'm not sure you knew him too well. My claw slides through the hole in the zipper and slider of my pocket. The giant locks eyes with me, looks down at my paw, then back up. He gives me a small nod. Ink opens another drawer, sticking his paw inside and pulling out a small bottle that looks like it's full of piss. Is this... This it? I carefully and as quietly as I can unzip my pocket. Yeah, that's it. Now slowly come here and put it on the table. Ink takes a step forward. Slowly, I said. All right, all right, jeez. At an even more sluggish pace, Ink takes another step. I meet his gaze through the eye holes of his mask, catching him wink. My paw slips inside the opening in my pants, wrapping my fingers around the device. Ink places the bottle down on our side of the table, then slowly backs, steps back. Once back on his side of the table, he looks over at Giant. The big dog raises a paw, scratching his scalp. He also folds his left ear down in the process. I feel the button tightening. I feel out the button tightening my grip. Hey, Mr. Policeman? Fuck off! What's in the bottle? None of your fucking business if it's is what's in the bottle. Let's go for a little walk, you and I. He whispers in my ear. He pushes me towards the door, keeping his arm around the neck. Alright, fine. I get it. We stopped just in front of the table in the middle of the room. How about this, then? What did, what did the idiot shout when he saw a goose? What? I pull the taser out of my pocket. Duck! I throw my arms backwards, slamming the taser into him, and press the button. Every muscle in his body immediately tenses up, his fingers squeezing the trigger. It clicks, but nothing follows. No shot goes off. I left the safety on. I feel the taser puncture skin, and when his thigh clamps shut around my paw, I know I've hit the target. I let go of the taser, pulling my back, pulling my paw back at, managed to claw myself free from his grip, throwing myself to the floor and crawling up to the counter on the side. Oh my god! All right, y'all. Once I get, I got. Oh, got water break. Water break. My goodness. At the same time, Giant steps forward, putting his paws on the underside of the table and flips it. It tumbles up into the air, slamming into the stunned man and throwing him to the floor. Ink runs forward, sliding across the floor on his knees, and in one slick move. And one slick move picks up, picks Giant's mask up off the floor and tosses it to, and tosses it to him before stopping just in front of me. Giant catches his mask and slips it back over his face, rapidly walking towards the flipped-over table. Ink grabs me by the shoulders, looking deep into my eyes through the mask. It's not until he touches me I notice, touches me I notice how much I'm shaking. You hurt? In the panic of everything going on around us, my throat won't allow me to speak. All I can manage as a response is to shake my head. Giant reaches back to unholster the handcuffs on his belt, grabbing the table with his other paw. The man underneath has other ideas. Once the table is off him, he sits up, something sharp and glistening in his grip. Giant! And just as quickly, he shoves it into the big dog's side. Oh no! Giant erupts into a horrible scream, somewhere between a deep bark and a whining howl. His right arm flies up before slamming back down into the man's skull hard, filling the room with the horrible crack of knuckle against bone. The man instantly goes limp on the floor. Me and Ink immediately get up and run over. Ink grabs the handcuffs from Giant's belt, bending down to restrain the man. 
Giant stumbles back against the counter, his paws on the knife sticking out of his abdomen. Fuck! Blood from the wound is seeping out, staining his t-shirt black and plastering it to his fur. Shit, are you okay? Of course he's not okay, he got fucking stabbed, dumbass! Giant's big arms wrap around my small frame, lifting me up off the ground. My nose is immediately filled with that sweet cinnamon scent, mixed with just a hint of musk. Are you? Yeah, I'm fine! I managed to squeal out. His grip on me slowly loosens, placing me back down on the ground. We both looked down at the handle sticking out of his abdomen. It's fine. I'm fine. It's not that deep. You're bleeding! He nods, sucking the air in through his teeth. I I'll be fine. He answers, his breathing heavy. His paw wraps around the handle. No, 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 leave it in. You'll lose a lot more blood if you pull it out. He stops, looking down at me. What? I saw it in the movie. Without turning around, Ink spinks up behind me. Normally I'd agree with you, Tiny, but we don't... But we don't know where the fuck that knife's been, or or what it's been used for. It's not worth risking the infection. Are you sure? I mean, right here? The sooner the better. Giant sighs, taking his mask back off, his paws shivering. All right, all right, give me something to bite down on. Ink finishes cuffing the man and turns to us, pulling his mask off too and grabbing his hat out of his backpack. I follow their lead, pulling my mask off too. Finally being able to see the guy, he appears to be some sort of dog or wolf. It's difficult to tell the difference in the dark. A red bandana covers his mouth and snout, blood painting his dark face for his dark face for even darker. We don't have a lot of options here, he shrugs. So uh we'll have to improvise. He reaches down and pulls the knife on his hip out, handing it to me. Hold this for me, will ya? I nod, grabbing the knife. And be careful with it. He unbuckles the sheath from his belt, holding it up, holding it up in front of the giant's muzzle. Open wide. Giant looks at it with suspicion. Oh, come on! It's not like your first time having a sheath in your mouth. <laughs> he darts his eyes at ink. Now open up! Giant huffs in frustration, lowering his jaw. Ink places the leather sheath between his teeth, and Giant bites down. Good boy! The possum wraps his paw around the handle, swaying with each breath Giant takes. Giant tenses at his touch. Ready? Wait! y'all, it is coffee time. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Giant mumbles through the leather. He lifts his open paw up to me. I look up at him, a bit shocked he'd offer. He looks back down at me with a sheepish grin, his teeth a stark white in the low light. I smile back at him reassuringly, placing my paw on his. I guess that confidence isn't entirely limited to the mask. What the fuck did you do? Hey, I'm fucking talking to you! Cody! Oh. Get a fucking grip on yourself. Do you hate me so bad that you have to do this to yourself? No, I... you fucking nothing without me, you know that? I got you out of that nasty town and this is how you repay me? You refuse to get a job, you refuse to go see my friends. You should be thankful I'm even putting up with your bullshit. Where the fuck do you think you're going? Hey, get the fuck back here now! Cody! Yeah. Not a great relationship, from what I can tell. Steady! Steady! Ew. Oh, God. Giant grips a paw. Grips my paw tighter, squeezing the circulation out of my fingers. I tell him to ease up, but considering the circumstances, I'm not in a situation to complain. Each breath leaving his heaving chest is underlined by a deep growl, emphasizing the agony he must be in. Ink slowly pulls on the handle, the blade sliding out centimeter by centimeter. His breathing starts picking up speed. You're doing great! I say in a low voice, rhythmically squeezing his paw in an effort to steady his breathing. He closes his eyes, and slowly his breathing levels out. He suddenly groans loud, panting through the leather. His fist slams into the countertop. Fuck! Sorry! Sorry! Didn't mean to twist it. The final centimeter of steel slides out, and Ink places, places it down on the counter. Alright, almost done. His flask comes out, back out, its contents slushing out the inside. Ink rolls giant shirt up just enough to see the wound, exposing his stomach, now more black than brown. Well, he was right in that it doesn't look too deep, it's still a large gash. He might need stitches for that. Then again, it's difficult to see, see exactly with all the blood-soaked fur and low light. Shame to waste good spirit, but you need this more than I do right now. Hang in there, big guy. This'll sting. He tips the bottle to, 
pouring some of the clear liquid down the side of Giant's stum belly. His eyes go wide, before shutting it tight, tears forming along the sides. He manages to wash some of the blood off his fur, but some of it has already oxidized. The leather, she the leather sheath in his muzzle does a good enough job stopping him from biting his own tongue off, even if he punctures it with his large fangs. As for the sa as for sound suppression, however, it's less effective. A long, high-pitched whine echoes throughout the kitchen, like a dog in pain, which I guess makes sense. His grip on my paw tightens again. Ink only pours for a few seconds before he screws the cap back on. Do I have anything to cover it? Ink, Ink swings his backpack off his shoulder and opens it, pulling out a roll of duct tape. Really? It's the best we got. He pulls a strip, a strip, a strip of tape out, using his fangs to bite it off. Man, Rivers, I'm seriously gonna have to, gonna have me neutered for botching this shit. Giant, giant pants as Ink applies the piece of tape. Don't worry, I'll keep her off your back. You better. You owe me for using up the last of my booze. He chuck, giant chuckles and immediately grunts in pain. I'll buy the next round of the Golden Stag. Deal. Ink says as he thumbs the piece of duct tape in place. We spend the next few minutes gathering our stuff back up. Flashlights, guns, taser. Uh, Alright, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and stop it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.